A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. I should have brought a lens hood. Well, hello everybody and welcome to beautiful sunny Wales. No, not sunny, but uh, it is beautiful. And as a consequence, I've decided to come to the woods to uh, make use of the conditions. Is there anywhere better to be than the woods in a downpour? Anyway, what I want to do today, apart from spend all my time making sure that my lens has got no water on it, is uh, talk about focus stacking, which is a little bit odd because uh, I don't do it. But I've been asked about focus stacking an awful lot recently and I assume it's because there must be another photographer whose video on focus stacking has gone viral or something, so it's on lots of people's minds. Because like I say, I, I don't really talk about it, I don't do it. And I'm going to explain why. Basically, it's because the scenes that I shoot typically are nowhere near deep enough to uh, require me to focus stack. For instance, if I was going to take a photo where you are, at say 24 millimeters, well, this fence would probably be my subject, and I reckon it's about 10 meters from the camera, something like that, maybe a bit less. But uh, 10 meters to, let's call it infinity, to those trees in the background, that's not a particularly deep scene. Uh, and therefore, I don't need to focus stack if I'm shooting at something like 24 millimeters. Now, it would be different if I had something that was like here to the camera. Yeah, so right now, my face is about half a meter from uh, the front of the lens. And uh, if I wanted to shoot a scene from half a meter to infinity, then even at 24 millimeters, that might be tricky in one shot if I wanted everything in focus. We can check actually. Yeah, half a meter, I would definitely need to focus stack if I also wanted infinity in focus. How do I know that? Well, I'm just looking at the depth of field table on the PhotoPills app. Great app, this is not sponsored. Uh, there are probably others. But uh, yeah, basically I can see that at 0.5 meters at 24 mil on a full frame camera, uh, even shooting F16, all that would be in focus is everything from 0.36 of a meter to 0.83 of a meter. Not very much. And I'd need to go to F40 to have everything acceptably sharp, which my lens doesn't do. Now focus stacking, if you don't know, is basically a process whereby you take multiple photos, all focused in different places, and then you stitch them all together in Lightroom or Photoshop. It used to be a bit of a pain, but uh, nowadays it's just one or two clicks. And as a consequence of stitching them all together, you end up with one photo that is sharp front to back, even if you've got a really deep scene. And there are times when you have to do this, like the scenario that I've just explained, but there are also times where you might want to do it. Uh, for example, if it's possible to get everything sharp front to back at F16, you might choose not to and instead shoot F8 and focus stack because maybe your lens performs better at f8. Most lenses do perform better at f8 than f16. And also if you're shooting at f16, you might be shooting in conditions that don't warrant a longer shutter speed and therefore you might have to raise the ISO. And therefore shooting at f8, sorry, I've just noticed the water on the lens again. Shooting at f8 might be advantageous. But uh, as I say, I, I really don't focus stack. I can't remember the last time I did. Uh, if you go on my website or my Instagram, you'll see that predominantly my subjects are normally 10, 15, 20 meters or beyond. And so even if I want that and infinity in focus, it really doesn't require that much depth of field. Absolutely pouring it down. Uh, well, as you can probably tell, it's the next morning. And uh, after all of yesterday's rain, We've got a forecast today of pure sunshine uh, with no wind. So I knew there was a pretty good chance of fog this morning. So I've come to a place that I've wanted to photograph for a long time. You can see this goalpost, this rusty goalpost on a field that looks like it's not been mown for who knows how long. And uh, it's against a backdrop of this hill that's currently shrouded in mist. And uh, with a little bit less mist, this will be exactly my kind of scene. A perfect mix of human made things the goalpost and nature. So uh, if you've watched this channel for a while you'll you'll know that that is exactly the sort of thing that gets my juices flowing. Photographically I'm working on a book called Human Nature, still. 
been going on that for a long time, but uh, I think we're nearly finished. A few more images like this, and then I might be ready to go. But uh, yeah, nice place to be this morning. Nice to not be getting soaked as well. And of course, true to form for any football pitch, there's, uh, there's another goal over there, so I should probably go and check that out as well, in case there are some nicer compositions. Yeah, let's go and do that. A couple of technical considerations that I'm thinking about. First off, regardless of my aperture, I'm making sure that I don't actually try and focus on the goalposts themselves because that looks like a bit of a tricky object for the, uh, the camera to autofocus on consistently at least. So uh, I'm focusing on the grass just beneath the goalposts. Uh, also, I'm getting a couple of different versions. One at f8, where I know pretty much everything's going to be in focus. I'm at about 40 millimeters, and uh, nothing enters the frame till about I don't know, eight meters or something. So I'm pretty confident that everything will be in focus at f8. I guess I could check, but at 40 millimeters, I'm pretty confident I know where I am with my apertures. Uh, but I'm also getting a version at f2.8, just because uh, I don't know if. The, uh, the grass and the detail in the grass, if it's all in focus, will distract from uh, my subject. And therefore I want a version where the grass in the foreground is just a little bit softer. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm not really sure about myself or my theories about things like that. But if you get a version of both, then you can discuss it with yourself infinitely afterwards when you're back at your desk in post-production. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see the difference between those two. Here comes the sun. Oh, it looks pretty good actually with the sunshine because there's still lots of mist on the hill. It just gives a little bit of light to everything before the hill. Could probably do with a touch more detail in the hillside though still. Uh, I think this one is the one that works best. I've done some printing. Uh, I'm testing some new papers, but basically this image is all about a concept that I talked about in an earlier video this year. Uh, I'll link it up here somewhere, where basically I'm talking about the relationship between the subject and the supporting elements in a scene. And it's a really fine balance to make sure that the supporting elements support and uh, give context to the subject, but don't distract from the subject. And uh, here, I think the balance is just right because there's some detail in the trees, enough to know that there's some trees and nature there, but not enough to distract from the goalposts. So um, yeah, I, I think this particular one works best. Yeah, and like I say, I made a video all about subjects and supporting elements uh, earlier this year. Probably the thing I find most difficult about photography, I reckon. Uh, also talking about printing, if you have been on my website, uh, in the past couple of days, you'll notice that there is only one photo available as a print currently, and it's this one. So yeah, essentially I have decided to uh, drastically simplify my print store uh, to the point where I only ever have one photo at any one time for sale. And this is available in three different sizes as prints always will be, but uh, this will be for sale until it sells out or for 30 days, whichever is longest. And then after that, it'll never be for sale as a print ever again, which feels quite sad because, um, well, I really like this one. It's probably my favorite photo I've taken all year, but it also feels quite exciting as well, I think. Uh, in this particular photo, I took it in Greenland between two settlements, uh, and I say between two settlements, this is hundreds of miles from any other civilization. Uh, and this was a weather station manned from 1949 to 1979, and I just have so many questions about this scene, and that, more often than not, is what ends up dictating whether or not I press the shutter. Uh, if you followed this channel for a while, you'll know that I'm all about trying to take photos about things rather than of things. And what I mean by that is that I want to have questions about a scene. And if I do, I tend to want to photograph it. And this is a, a really good example of that. So yeah, probably my favorite photo I've taken this year. And if you would like it as a print in one of three sizes, then uh, head to my website to check it out in the next 30 days, as I say, but hopefully it'll be sold out sooner than that. And finally, a huge thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace, who make website building possible for even numpties like me. And I didn't used to think I'd be capable of having an online store. No, I just didn't think I'd have the skills. 
But it turns out you don't really need skills with Squarespace because it's super simple and even all the clever backend stuff, they simplify everything. And so if you would like your own online store to sell things like prints or just a portfolio to show off your work, perhaps a blog, then Squarespace, I think, is a fantastic solution that I can't recommend enough. And you can get a free trial by going to squarespace.com. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, just go to squarespace.com forward slash James and you'll get 10% off of that first purchase. So a big thank you to Squarespace for their continued support and helping me run my business with things like this. And I'll see you next week with uh, a different video. I've got to get to the airport to go and film it. It's not going to be at an airport. All will become clear. I'll see you then.